I'm joined by James Krause, who is getting ready to fight once again, this time down in Brazil when he takes on Sergio Moraes here coming up on November the 16th. James, how are you? I am good, man. Just uh, finishing up uh, training camp. Got a couple weeks left, and then I'll be ready to rock to Sao Paulo. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a little while since we've seen you inside the, the cage. It's been over a year. I, I know you just uh, you and your wife just had a new baby, so congratulations on that. Have you just been uh, you know getting used to an addition to the family and just focusing on that, or have you been uh, in the gym staying fresh, getting ready for a fight? Both. I mean, both. Uh, yeah, both. Uh, I mean, I, I don't ever. I'm, I train year round. I, I mean, I train twice a day, typically at least five days a week. Uh, I, I I definitely train six days a week though. Um, I, I pretty much do the same schedule all year round. So it's not like I ever take time off, but, uh, yeah, I mean the new, the new it's whenever you're in the middle of a training camp, like I, I can't, I have a thing where I say like, you can't disrespect the game. So like, just because other things outside of your life are happening, doesn't mean that you can change the way you train for a fight and get ready for it. So if you disrespect, if you disrespect the game, the game will disrespect you. So I didn't want to really jump into anything until I knew I could commit, uh, you know, to a full training camp to, for anybody, especially Sergio. Sure. Well, congratulations on the addition to the family. I know that's got to be exciting for you. Uh, as you mentioned, you, you do uh, own a gym there in Missouri, Glory MMA and Fitness. you got a lot of studs that, that are training uh, underneath you there. One uh, in particular that I just saw at the Boston card, Sean Woodson, who beat Kyle Bozniak, a hometown guy. He's got a lot of experience, and Woodson comes in off of um, Contender Series, and he's huge for the weight division. He's tall, he's long. Oh. And he put on a masterful performance. What is this kid's ceiling? Uh, man, if, I mean, so what, what I love about Sean is he comes he comes from a boxing background, and he's long. He's I would say he's every bit of like six three at the at featherweight, and uh, he, he is a, he's it's weird how he's shaped. He's long and he's long and he fights long. So I see a lot of guys in the UFC that are long, but they don't fight long. Uh, but man, he is super long. He's oddly proportioned, and he fights super long. And uh, he's got great boxing. He gets behind his jab really well, and he can crack, man. It's not, it's not like it's not a, it's not a power shot, but it, it stings you when you, when he, when he hits you. It's, it's got a little thud at the end of it. And uh, man, when he, when he brings one, there's seven right behind it. So he, uh, he's gonna be a tough kid. He's gonna be a tough kid to, to outstrike. That is for 100% sure. Yeah, I'm excited to see what the future holds for him. Uh, he really opened my eyes uh, when he when he beat uh, Bojniak here in Boston. Uh, another guy I just wanted to get uh, s some thoughts on is uh, Grant Dawson. Uh, most recently, he beat uh, the uh, Ultimate Fighter winner, Mike Trezano. That was his last fight. What has he been up to, and is, does he have a fight lined up anytime soon? He does. He's about to announce his next fight. It'll be at the beginning of uh, 20, uh, 2020. The dork is actually sitting in the parking lot right in front of me right now. Uh <laughs> But he's he's uh, that kid. The ceiling for him is amazing as well. His grappling is look. I've been grappling with high level guys for 13 years. His grappling is some of the best MMA grappling that I've ever rolled with. Uh, his wrestling is phenomenal. He doesn't get tired, and his uh, striking and setups like, he's getting better every day at. So there's still a lot of things that he can get better at too. Uh, we have a nice little group of young guys coming up that you know it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be the wave. You know the the next thing, and I think. We have five UFC fighters out of this, you know, small gym in, in Lee Summit, Missouri. So I think that's a testament to what we're doing. And uh, you know, there's not very many people that can say that. Period. Let alone we're, you know, we're in a we're in a small town. So you know, it's it's pretty awesome. I know you have another student that just picked up a big win for LFA. Mike Breeden, I believe, is is his last name. Can, can is it him or anybody else that really stands out that you can say uh, is a real up and comer that maybe the national MMA fans don't know, but they will soon. Yeah, yeah. So uh, three guys come to three guys come to my immediate attention right now. Uh, Mike is definitely one of them. I would say he's probably next in line out of my group to get signed. He's got incredible boxing, uh, durable. He's got he's got a good ground game. Uh, he's got good wrestling. He's got good jujitsu too. He just he just likes to hit people. Uh, he's he's really fun to watch. He's a fans fighter for sure. Uh, if you've never watched him fight, just look up some of his YouTube videos. Gosh, he's he's fun to watch. Uh, the next one. Uh, we have a kid named uh, David Onama that he's four or five and oh right now. Kid is just an athlete, uh, super, super athlete, hits like a truck. Also another fan fighter. He's, he's fun to watch. And then uh, he, uh, Mike is going to be a, a lightweight. David's going to be at featherweight. And then I have a kid at flyweight, Jeff Molina. Uh, he's, gosh, he's fun to watch. He, he, you know, he fights a lot like TJ. Uh, he fights a lot like TJ. Matter of fact, he's kind of stole a lot of TJ stuff. 
uh, another dude, Walter Waite, Jason Witt, right now, Trey Ogden. We have a bunch of guys coming out. Of I mean, we really do. The, I, honestly, we have we have probably five people that at any point could get signed to the UFC and, and be ready to rock. That's exciting, and it's got to make it uh, very good for your gym, especially in a small town. Uh, everyone that's into MMA has got to be just coming in there in waves. Do you do anything outside of, of mixed martial arts and family life? Like, do you get into any other sports? Like, are you a Chiefs fan? Uh, what, what else do you do? Bro, you see how much I'm on the road? You see me <laughs> in all the events. Come on, man. No, I mean, I, yeah, I watch. I like football. I, I watch football on Sundays if I'm free. If I don't, you know what I mean? I, MMA is my life, though. If I'm not fighting, training myself, and coaching others, uh, I, I'm, I like business, you know, I do some real estate investing stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm, my friends say I'm all about it all the time. So it's, that's kind of what I, I really pick a few things and I kind of obsess over it and I don't, I don't have a lot of downtime and that's by design. So, uh, yeah, I, what I, what I am good at, I stay in my lane and I, and I, I try to get, I try to be the best at it. Now the fight's a couple weeks away. Uh, what are the weight cuts looking like for you these days? Are they becoming a little bit harder? Uh, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah, oh, it's harder, I don't like the word harder, uh, there, it's definitely, so, like, my first fight at 70, uh, I guess it would be my second fight at 70, the one that, where I officially switched weight classes, uh, I would say I probably cut, like, 12 pounds in the last, uh, maybe not even that, honestly, it might have been, like, eight in the last 24 hours, and that was really me trying to, you know, keep water, weight on. And I was, I was eating pretty good. Uh, I didn't even cut sodium out all the way. I was, you know, it was, it was pretty lax this time. I've definitely, I've grown into my, my body a little bit more. I'm um, seeing higher weights that I'm really not used to. Uh, I would say this time I, I'll be looking at probably like a, a, a 12, maybe even a little bit more pound cut, uh, of water. So it's nothing crazy, but that's the whole reason I switched from 55 to 70. It's like, I can't, I just, man, I'm getting older. Like, I'm 33 years old. It's not like I move like I'm old or anything like that, but uh, it they definitely get harder. The 55, it's just not, I don't even want to, I don't, man, at 55, I'm cutting to 55. I don't like you. I don't like this water bottle. I don't like anybody or anything. I don't like that lamp behind you. I don't like nothing. So I just decided that it's better for quality of life to go up. And I think, you know, my, my first fight there, I think I showed that I can I can compete there. Sure. Yeah, fair enough. Now, you are on a three-fight win streak. Uh, you said you're 33 years old, but you look at a lot of fighters nowadays, like a Daniel Cormier. You look what Dan Henderson did. A lot of these guys that compete at the highest of levels in the UFC win titles into their early 40s. What do you, where do you see your, your uh, evolution over the next few years? Do you think your best years are still ahead of you? Uh, honestly, I think the where like you guys will see me, the, 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 the best come out of me, I think, is going to be more towards coaching. Like, I think that that's where you'll see the, like, a, a slow transition for me. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I definitely think that I'll make more of a name for myself coaching than I will than I will fighting. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Well, you clearly have a good stable of fighters around you right now, uh, and you're doing great things there in Missouri for uh, Glory MMA and Fitness. Let's talk a little bit about your opponent, Sergio. Uh, I was looking just at the at the height and the the weight and the reach and everything. You seem to to really have him beaten in all aspects. You're taller. You have a longer reach. Do you feel like this is going to be a fight where you're going to be able to dictate the pace or where the fight goes? Uh, yeah. So, I mean. Yeah, Sergio's he's great on the ground, obviously. Uh, in in this past few fights, I feel like that he's tried to strike uh, a lot more, and I think he's came up kind of short on that a few times. I do feel like off of his last fight, uh, you know, losing by knockout, I feel like he's gonna go back to his bread and butter. Mm. I think I'm gonna have to fight to take down hard the first round. Um, I think if I stop the first few, he'll quit shooting, and then we'll end up kickboxing. I do feel like in a kickboxing match, I have a I'm a I feel like I'm a heavy favorite on that. Um, you know, I have to respect. He's got some great wins. Uh, he, he's good. He's good. If he gets on top of me, there's gonna be problems. You know what I mean? Like he, he's good. He's a three-time world champion in jiu-jitsu. He's got good wrestling, uh, and he's got a lot of experience against high-level guys at middleweight and welterweight. So I have to respect that. Um, I do. I do anticipate him uh, coming out hard on me in the first round, though. I I think that, I, man, I can fight for 15 minutes, no problem. I've been doing it for a long time, and. Uh, I do not feel like uh, if he comes out shooting hard, I think he's going to have a long fight. I think it's going to, you know, we're going to drag him in the deep end. He, I think his best way to win is to get on top of me and finish me in the first round. I think that's the, the best way he's going to win. I think if this fight goes past the first round, I feel like I'm going to pull away from him. 
I know you're a humble guy. You're not going to come out and say you're just going to run right through this guy. But I do envision you see yourself getting the win, whether it's, uh, you know, a knockout submission or, you know, you win a decision. When you close your eyes at night and you go to bed, like, how do you see this fight ending? Do you see yourself getting a finish here? Yes, I do. I do feel like I'm going to knock him out. Yes. What? what? Well, I think it'll be late, two, three. I mean, it just dep it, it depends, honestly, man. It really depends on because he's durable. I tell you what, he is super durable. He's not he's not an easy guy to put away. Uh, and typically uh, on the ground, I'm I'm the favorite on the ground. Like I have a better uh, ground base than most people. I don't feel like that's the case in this. I'm not afraid to be on top of him. You know what I mean? But I definitely don't want to be underneath him. Um, to whereas like my last fight. I would almost invite him to come down, you know, uh, in the last few fights, I would almost, almost invite them to come down into my guard or half guard or whatever, but that's definitely not the case here. Um, it just depends. I think it's going to, a lot, a lot of it's going to depend on how he fights me. You know what I mean? If he comes out trying to wrestle hard in the first and he can't get me down, I think that's, I think he's going to, I think he'll slow faster and then, uh, he will get sloppier. You know what I mean? Like typically as the fight goes on, he does not do as well just in, past experience that's not my opinion those are facts you know what i mean like as the fight goes on and progresses he has a tendency to slow a little bit so um also though he's a son of a bitch in round one you know what i mean so we'll see i don't know how he's gonna fight me if he tries to strike with me like he has been the last few fights then they could you know things could get interesting i don't i don't i'm not sure but if he tries to shoot on me and he can't get me down i, I don't think i don't see it going well for him in two and three who's making the trip with you to brazil uh, my coach, uh, Mark Montoya, Factory X, and then I have Grant Dawson, uh, Geek Squad Grant Dawson, and then uh, and then my manager, Joe Wooster. Are you going to uh, spend any time there sightseeing, or are you just going there for business and coming home? Hell no, baby. I'm there for business. I'm busting heads and leaving. <laughs> okay. Before I let you go, I do want to ask you, you fought a guy named Jorge Masvidal in the past. He's got a big fight coming up with Nate Diaz. I can't wait for this fight. Uh, obviously, the whole country, all the MMA fans around are, are clamoring, waiting for this to start. I got to get a prediction. Who do you see winning and how? Yeah, I, I think Masvidal is going to shut him out uh, three rounds to zero. I don't even think it's going to be competitive. I mean, I don't want to say it's going to be competitive. Nate's always game. He's always going to make a good fight out of it, but I just don't see, I don't see George losing a round to him. I don't, I just don't see it. Okay. Uh, I can't wait for that fight. I, I, everyone I've talked to seems to be split, so uh, I'm excited for it. Now, uh, what's next for you? If everything goes as planned, you go down to Brazil, you get this win, when would you like to fight next? Are we looking early 2020? Man, honestly, I I have no idea. I, I, I try not to – that's kind of part of, like, disrespecting the game. I don't really like to look ahead. I like – you know, I got I have a tough dude in front of me, Sergio. He's a, he's a big dude, strong dude, uh, middleweight, coming down to welterweight, uh, three-time world champion jiu-jitsu. I'm sure he's training hard for this fight. This is, in my opinion, this is a must-win for him. He's, his head's on the chopping block on this one I, uh, or somewhere close. He needs a win, and he needs it bad. So uh, I do think I'm going to see the best Sergio Marias, and that's the one I want to see. Uh, I, I think I'm going to see his A game, though. So I don't want to look past him yet uh, until, I've, until I've stepped past him. You know, that's, so I, I know what's in front of me. I, I'm confident in my skills. I'm, I'm confident that I'm going to get the finish, but – I'm also I'm aware of what's in front of me, too. Well, James, I appreciate the time. Uh, before I let you go, anyone you want to thank uh, or any uh, social media you want to plug, the floor is yours. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff is always the James Krause. You guys want to follow me? Cool. If not, kick rock. <laughs> appreciate it, man. Have safe travels down to Brazil. We'll talk again soon. Hey, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you.